Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 17 of Reconstructing Cave Story, Multiple Resolutions. So, as a little precursor, thus far we've been working with 32 by 32 sprites and 640 by 480 screen size resolution in pixels, which I'm sure you guys know if you've been following along. But what we're going to do in this episode is actually switch over to the 16 by 16 sprites and the 320 by 240 screen size. And why would I want to do that? This seems like kind of a waste of time. Well, yeah, it is if you have the sprites, but since I can't legally provide you with all of the media, you're going to need to get it from the game yourself. So that means you're going to need to be able to use the 16 by 16 sprites that comes in the original case story so you can download it for free. Otherwise, you can just skip this episode and use 32 by 32 sprites if you are willing to buy the Nicholas version of the game. That's N-I-K-L-S. And that's Cave Story Plus. And you can find it on Steam. So if you're willing to drop down $10 or $5 whenever you can find it on sale, then you can get all the 32 by 32 beautiful, beautiful bitmaps that uh, Nicholas made, or I don't know who made them actually, but they were put out by that company. Anyway, so the solution is that we're going to be using is I'll show you where you can get the PBM files, and um, if you download and unzip the uh, cave story, it'll it'll have this dokutsuku Dukutsu, I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry, but this cave story um, folder, and inside of it is a data folder, and inside of that are all these PBM files with all of the, which are really just bitmap files with an extra copyright pixel appended to the end of it, but you can still read them like so. So I can show you um, mychar.pbm. And that's this right here. And as you can see, it's pretty small, but um, yeah, you can get those from the actual game. So those are the sprites that I'm going to have you guys use from now on. I'll tell you the names of them, but I'll probably keep using the 32 by 32 sprites, but I can't legally provide you with them. So that's why we're switching. Anyway, um, so what we're going to need to do in order to do this is convert all of our pixel values to screen size agnostic values. And that's because we have our motion constants, which are based on a 640 by 480 screen size. Our collision rectangles are still based on a 32 by 32 sprite size. And our backdrop tiles are <clears throat> 128 by 128. And we'll have to fix that. And we'll, we'll just say it's four times the tile size. So. Yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to start in the game class with, you guessed it, hopefully, our tile size, screen width, and screen height. And I'm going to go ahead and change these all at the same time because I'm daring like that. So 320, so do 320, fat tab, and 240. And I'm going to change. Um, here we have our annoying constant. I'll just, since this is supposed to be half um, the screen width and half of the screen height, I'm just going to change it to that instead of 320 by 240. So we'll do a game. We don't need to scope it in. We'll do K okay, screen width divided by 2 and K okay, screen height divided by 2. All right, um, that's it for a game. Um, but I'll go into our most recent backdrop.cc, and instead of using this 128, I'll use game k tile size times four because that's what 128 was based on. Four times of it, it was four tiles in one giant background size tile. Um, yeah, so. Now I need to convert the pixel values in our, um, I'll go for the map next because that will be easier. Um, <clears throat> num rows, num calls stays the same. And K 
Okay, down here where we do it, we do we use the game K tile size, so we're fine there. Um, oh, you know what? Before I do this, I'm gonna load in our PBM files, and I'm just gonna rename the, them to BMP files, so I don't have to change these inside of here. But just so you can watch me do that. So this is our content folder with this, the BK blue up at map, the my chart up at map, and the port cave that we all have that we have already. Um, and so I'm going to bring in the Dukutsu folder from the zip file that you download and the link that I have in the description for Cave Story. It's a free download and you unzip it and Dukutsu is the only folder inside of it. And then inside of Dukutsu is a data folder and this has a lot of images in it. And remember these PBM files are just bitmap files um, <clears throat> and it's got a lot of images in it. And I'll start by copying over the port cave.bitmap and replacing that. Um, so if we go into stage, this is where all the map files are. So let's search for port cave and then copy this over. And so we can get rid of our bitmap file and rename this to this PBM file to bitmap. And also just to kind of Yes, I want to change it. And also, just to kind of prove to you, um, I opened up one of the I opened up arms.pbm, and as you can see, this copyright pixel is appended to the end of it, and that's just for interesting factoid about what pixel did, I guess. Yeah, so that's that. I've I've actually already copied the other ones over, so I don't need to do that again. But I just did one to show you guys on camera how it's done and to really just to show you that PBM files are bitmap files. So, yeah. Um, the other thing I need to mention is um, this: the new mychart.bitmap doesn't have multiple character frames, so you need to be careful with this and make sure that your character frame is set to zero or one. You can do one. Um, zero or one, but you don't get all the different Halloween um, seasonal quote or curly brace <coughs> sprites. So if you want to get those, you can get those from the Nicholas um, version Cave Story Plus. But yeah, and those are actually bitmap files, which is interesting. So uh, we don't actually have anything to do in map.cc. We do have more to do in player.cc, but I will save and build and show you how it looks now, just so we can, um, let's run it. Yeah, so as you can see, the sprites drawing correctly and everything, and if we look down, look up, and all that kind of stuff, jump, all the sprites are drawing correctly. His collision rectangle's off, but it's twice as big as it needs to be, so that's why that's happening. And then also the positioning gets weird because um, we're drawing a smaller sprite than our collision rectangle. So yeah, let's fix that now, um, our collision rectangle. Back to the player class, um, we have all of our motion constants, which are all floats, and then our collision constants, like our collision rectangles, which are based on integers. So what, since um, I don't want to do casting in this, I'm going to have to make a template function. And the reason I have to make a template function instead of um, just multiplying times 16 divided by 32 uh, for all of these, which is what I want to do ideally to make it more robust so I can switch back and forth between tile sizes easily. Um, <clears throat> this would result in zero if it's integer division. And if it's floating point division, then I have to cast to integers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, um, well, actually this would work, 16 divided by 32. But I can't just make a single constant times 16 divided by 32, because this would result in zero. So because of this little factoid, I'm going to make a template function inside of our game class that uh, can take floats and return floats, or take ints and return ints. And I think this will just be easier. Um, so template type name t 
uh, static t game units to pixels. And this is just a conversion function that will take in a type t, which is going to be either a float or a um, integer usually. And these will just be game units. And I'll define it inside of our game CC class so that we can have access to these k tile size and such. So I'll copy this in, label it as static, um, and not use that. So game, scope it in, all the fun stuff. Okay, so this is really just going to be return game units times <clears throat> game k tile size divided by 32. And so our game units will be in our base game units will be based on the um, 32 by 32 tiles um, in the 640 by 480 version of the game. And then we cut it in half when we switch down to the 16 by 16 tiles. Yeah, so this way we can switch between these just by switching these numbers, these three numbers. Um, and I could even go one further and say that this is equal to what is it, 15, 15 rows and 20 columns, is that it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up in our map CC class because that's where we have it written now. Yeah, 15 rows and 20 columns, so I'm gonna um, <clears throat> do that here. So this will be 15 times game, sorry, 20 times game K tile size, and this will be 15 times game K tile size. And this way, we just have to change this one number between 16 and 32 <coughs> if we ever want to switch. Um, of course, we have to switch out the sprites too, but I'll figure out. I think I might make that more robust later on when I actually want to switch between them in game. But for now, I want to just keep moving forward. So game units to pixels. Now let's actually use that. It's going to be really simple because we just have to wrap everything that is a pixel value in uh, this method call. So it'll just be, all these constants will be, ooh, I should scope that in. So game, scoped in, game units to pixels. It's just a conversion function. It's pretty simple, but I had to make it a template so that it could um, handle integers and floats. Um, and these are all frames, so we don't need to convert those. And here again, we have pixel values. And I think this is all the pixel values we have. I could make a function, I could make the rectangle take in um, game units instead of pixels, but I don't think I want to change that right now. Um, but I will make this look a little bit prettier so you guys can see it all on screen. This is really the fun part of coding, isn't it? Okay, I think this is it. Um, so if this all works, I'm going to make this the end of the episode. We'll see that there is another problem that's been introduced or that needs to be fixed or taken care of or however you want to think of it, but we'll take care of it in the next episode. Um, but let's make sure it builds first. Ah. So I'm going to ignore those for now. These just want the little li label F after them so that they don't um, 
think that they're doubles. Possible loss of data. Okay, unresolved. Gain units. So after a little bit of Googling, I was reminded that you can't put templates in a CC file. And this is obvious if you know how templates work, which I do, and I should have known not to put it in the CC file. But <clears throat> basically, I'm going to give you a quick C++ lesson for those of you who are excited about C++ lessons. Um, and not a very in-depth one. You have to put templates inside of the header file so that um, the compiler is able to generate the code because all the other, uh, the player CC only knows about game.h, it doesn't know about game.cc, so um, since the compiler needs to generate the necessary functions for player.cc, all the necessary information needs to be in the header file so that player CC can get the necessary information. So all that to say, you need to put template definitions in the header file unless you want to do some tricky magic, which we don't because tricky magic is bad. It confuses people, and that's bad. Um, so let's build and run and see how it looks. And it's not going to look that great. Uh, I'll just tell you right now. The motion will look weird. Quote is run walking all the time, and it's extremely blocky, and it's just horrible motion. And what's the problem, Chris? Like, it looked so good when we were doing 32 by 32 tiles. The problem is um, the amount of precision we have in our um, positions is too low and we need to keep more so we need to change our precision in our positions to floats instead of integers so I'm actually going to do that in the next episode um, yeah sort of a cliffhanger this episode right guys cliffhanger huh okay so thanks for watching um, and if you want to take a crack at making the uh, integers into floats I definitely encourage you to take a crack at it. The whole point of this is to get you guys to like know everything you need to know in order to build your own games, not really as a, hey, watch me code all this stuff because I'm so cool. Like, it's just like, hopefully this is helpful. Yeah. So anyway, happy developing.